Hello guys and welcome back to the new year. In this episode I hope to build the MIP unit that it sits in and be able to get it off the maintenance stand. Now that all the electronics have been finished it's just a simple task of putting the side walls on and hopefully all the gubbins that go underneath the centre. The parts have been designed on Fusion 360. I printed out the design. It's time to go outside to the workshop and start cutting some wood. Here's the piece from outside, cut to size. I've now marked a big X in the centre. I don't know if you can see it on the camera there. But there are the dimensions off the computer. I'm going to drill through here and the back of the MIP just here, that corner needs to sit on that cross there. So what I'll do is to help support it while I set this up is to drill a hole through there, put a screw through and let the MIP corner sit on this screw head here. That's the theory anyway. This is actually quite heavy and lifting it off the maintenance stand by myself while putting this on and getting it in the right place will be a bit of a mission. So let's see how it goes. And that's one side done. Now to the other end. I've turned the unit round, this is the other end. I've marked my hole, so now to drill it and get the other end bolted on. After finally designing the new sideboard panels on Fusion 360, I've decided to stop going with the MIP behind me here and get on with the side panels because obviously it's going to make it look a lot more like a real aircraft. This is version one. This is from my, uh, what I would like to call now the baby sim because uh, everything looks tiny now compared to the real life size MIP sat behind me here. Based on the same premise, we'll have the cup holder. I was going to hopefully reuse these panels here, but they're just the wrong size. Obviously, everything being 20 centimeters smaller in the overall diameter, all these panels are just a slightly fraction smaller. So this panel here should have been 150 by 155 millimeters. And I think this one is 140 by 140. So just a little bit too small to go into the new sidewall assembly. On the other hand though, the oxygen panel, well, I didn't know what they were at the time and I just made it to look, pre to, to look pretty really. And that is completely the wrong size. In fact, I made it that big that I had to fit it in sideways along the length. There should also be a document holder which fits in here and the map and chart light panel needs to be a little bit bigger at the front here. And now you get a rough idea of how small the other sim must have been compared to this one. And I actually didn't think the other sim was that small. Anyway, let's head over to the computer and check out the Fusion 360 design. Here we have what I would call my sidewalls. Now this is probably specifically designed to fit my my cockpit so far so everything matches up everything will fit well according to fusion 360 will fit on the aircraft itself or the, the MIP that I've created on my far left here we've got a virtual cockpit from open openair.ru which is fantastic for for checking around the cockpit as if I'm in there and I can take screen measurements of anything I require, which has also been a great help. It's very simple for Fusion 360 from the design then to print out the design drawings to go outside and start cutting wood. That's the theory anyway. Uh, so we've now got, here they are, all printed, ready to go. We now have 13 design drawings to go out, cut wood and produce, hopefully, the side panel. Now I've made this packing piece, 
which isn't on the drawings, but it should make it a lot easier to assemble the parts together. And that would go right there, and it gives something the MDF, the three parts of the MDF structure to attach to. That's all the wood finally cut up. Now it's time to start assembly. That's the unit out of the clamps. The glue is semi-dry. Just need to fill some of these holes and some of the gaps with filler before we do a final sand. Well, I guess it was inevitable and I've made my first cock up. For some reason, I labeled the panels two, three, four, and five at the front here, as the drawing indicates and as I created. But for some bizarre reason, I went two, three, five. And as you can see, that's the reason why it doesn't actually fit. We've got a bit of overhang, which isn't a problem. I thought I'd just trim it with the router. However, now I've got to use four for panel five. And now that is some serious overhang that needs to be sorted out. So a quick trim on the table here and we'll get it attached. Now it's time to go over the edges with a half inch round over and get some nice corners on there. It's Saturday morning, slightly overcast. This is what we did yesterday. Now it's time to try and finish them off. There's the contoured side. Now to attach the back panel to that. Bit of glue and a few screws. Let's do this. I'm at the point now where I've reached the, uh, the vent panel. And according to the drawings, there needs to be a big hole here for the vent. So I'm gonna head inside and cut it on the CNC. And thanks to the CNC machine, we now have two perfect rectangles cut into the side panels for the vents. That's the baggage box bay's done. Just gonna put a round over on and see how it looks.
Good morning. It's Sunday morning here, and this is where we got to last night. They're looking pretty good. All the filler and the glue has dried. So now it's time to finish them off. And in the background, I've just started printing all the parts to go in them. Now onto the rear supports and I've just cut a centre block out of hardwood. I'm going to line it with MDF so it can be shaped nice and easily and all looks the same. A bit like that and then I have a face plate on, round over each corner and attach it to the side wall. Let's see how we get on. Here we are, nearly at the end. It's now time to put the final few bits together. I think for this episode, we'll call it a day and I'll see you next time.